Hello and welcome back. In section 7.1, we look at the definition of the Laplace transform. So I'll do a quick definition and then we'll uh, put it to work with a couple examples. So let f be a function defined for t at least zero. A little notation, uh, let's say cap L of f of t. So this is the notation for Laplace transform of function f of t. We take the <coughs> pardon me, integral from zero to infinity of e to the opposite of s times t. s is, uh, we're going to assume in this section, uh, in the set of reals, uh, t is our independent variable times f of t dt. A reminder, S is in the set of reals. And uh, we have one more stipulation. Uh, the integral must converge. So if, the inter uh, if we can't make the integral converge, uh, the uh, Laplace transform is not valid. All right, so first we'll look at one that uh, we get to play with a little piecewise function. So this function is going to act as 3 if t is on 0, 2. It will act as t plus 1 if uh, t is on 2, 5. <laughs> and it will... Uh, He's just a, a zero for five and over. Uh, so just like uh, we could break up integrals uh, when we were finding, say, areas back in your Calc 1 days, if we had a change in behavior of which function was the top function, which function was the bottom function, we could break apart uh, into sections. Same thing with Laplace transforms, we can break it along these sections as long as we eventually cover everything from zero to infinity. Uh, so our Laplace of f of t. So our first section would just go from zero to two of e to the negative st. That's just part of our definition. f of t is three dt. Then we have another set from 2 to 5, e to the negative st, part of the definition, times t plus 1 dt, and the rest from 5 to infinity of 0 times e to the minus st dt. The 0 times will, of course, drop this last one off. So in our Laplace of f of t, so we're integrating uh, this one. Uh, so this would be negative three over s uh, e to the negative st dt. My apologies, we did the integral, we lost the dt. Uh, so we're evaluating that from zero to two. Uh, this next one, though, uh, I'm going to have to break it up into two pieces. So the first piece will go from 2 to 5 of t e to the negative s t dt plus integral from 2 to 5 
and distributing it to the one, we have e to the minus st dt. All right, uh, so this first one, I'm just gonna bring along for the ride for the moment. We'll just kind of evaluate all of them uh, towards the end of the problem. So I'll just hang on to this negative three over s. Uh, you just wanna watch your s's and fives here. Just make sure that you can tell the difference between the two, um, particularly when I'm working with um, a five in an s problem, I try to make sure that I have a separate sort of cap on my fives. So this guy is an s, negative three over s, uh, e to negative s times t from zero to two. Uh, this one, uh, we need integration by parts. Uh, I'm just going to work that off to the side here. Uh, so our u for this problem will be t dv will be e to the negative st dt. So du is dt. v is negative 1 over s e to the negative st. That s looks too much like a 5, so I'll try to steer him down a little. Okay, so breaking up just this part, we have then u times v, so negative t over s, e to the negative st from 2 to 5, minus integral, same boundaries, of v times du. So negative 1 over s, e to the negative st times dt. So these two are just from the integration by parts on this guy. Uh, don't forget that this one still exists. Don't forget this guy hanging around on the end here. Uh, this one though, a uh, uh, nice quick integral. Uh, so that would be minus one over s e to the minus st from two to five. Okay, so the last one to integrate, and uh, then we're ready uh, to just start plugging in some endpoints. So the plus of f of t, so negative 3 over s, e to the negative s t from 0 to 2, uh, minus t over s, e to the minus st from 2 to 5. Okay, integrating this guy, minus and minus, that makes it a plus, so plus 1 over s. Integrating e to the minus st would be negative 1 over s, e to the minus st. And from 2 to 5 on that one as well. There's our first piece, second piece, third piece, and our last one uh, is already set up. 1 over s e to the minus st from 2 to 5. Okay, so now we're looking at plugging in some endpoints. So we have negative 3 over s times e to the negative 2s minus e to the 0. Plus uh, negative t over s, so negative 5 over s, e to the negative 5s minus negative 2 over s e to the negative 2 s. So that's our first two. Um, then we have minus 1 over s squared times e to the negative 5 s uh, minus e 
to the negative 2s. And we'll squeeze this guy in on the next line. So minus 1 over s e to the negative 5 s minus e to the negative 2 s. So at that point, uh, now we're just uh, knocking down parentheses and then we're hunting like terms from there. So our Laplace of f of t. So negative 3e to the negative 2s over s. e to the 0 is 1. So a negative 1 times this will just flip the sign. So plus 3 over s. Uh, this guy will just come along. Minus 5 over s e to the negative 5 s. Uh, minus a negative, that'll flip that to a, a plus there. So 2 over s e to the negative 2 s. Uh, distributing, uh, minus 1 over s squared e to the negative 5 s. And plus 1 over s squared e to the negative 2 s. And finally, distributing the minus 1 over s, so minus 1 over s, e to the negative 5s, and plus 1 over s, e to the negative 2s. All right, so take a moment, uh, maybe even just pause the video, see if you can hunt down any like terms that you see here. Okay, well, welcome back if you lost it. Uh, so let's see. So we have a minus 3 over s e to the negative 2s, and we had a plus 2 over s e to the negative 2s, and a plus 1 over s e to the negative 2s. Those will add to 0. Uh, let's see, we did have a 3 over s by its lonesome. It didn't have a partner, so we'll bring that along. Let's see, we had a negative... 5 over s e to the negative 5s and a negative 1 over s e to the negative 5s so a negative 6 over s e to the negative 5s so let's see that was used that was used okay and then we're up to uh, the bring the s squares along so minus 1 over s squared e to the negative 5s plus 1 over s squared e to the negative 2 s. So this has made a new function out of the old function. And the idea is a little bit later in uh, chapter 7, they do get uh, make something that would have been tougher to integrate into something a little less challenging to, or uh, I'm sorry, not integrate, but uh, solve in a diffie q situation. Uh, so this one, uh, I would just leave it this way. Um, some people factor the s, some people factor an e to the negative 5s. Uh, some people get common denominators, wh whatever version you like. It's just fine. All right, so let's try another one where this time uh, we don't have it um, cut off at... Um, just a, a finite value. Uh, so we'll look at f of t is t e to the 8 t. So by the definition of our Laplace transform, so L of f of t, and there's one ugly brace there. Draw a pretty one on that 
side. Integral from zero to infinity. So this time we didn't do it piecewise with uh, any rules about uh, where to look. e to the minus st times te to the 8t times dt. Um, so here, uh, notice we do have the same base. So a little plus of f of t. So now integral of te to the minus s plus 8. Each of those had a t attached, dt. Now it's going to sort of help us a little bit later on in the problem because we're looking to approach infinity on these. If we factor out a negative in that exponent for the e. So let's go ahead and take care of that. So opposite of s minus 8 times t dt. So different luck, same value. So now, uh, at this point, we can do integration by parts. So I'll make the u the t. So du is dt. dv is going to be the rest. So e to the minus, opposite of, I should say, s minus 8 times t dt. So v will be negative 1 over s minus 8 e to the opposite of s minus 8 t. So now our Laplace of f of t u times v so negative t over s minus 8 e to the opposite of s minus 8 times t. And we're evaluating that from 0 to infinity. Again, we'll get to that in a minute. Minus integral of v times du. Okay, so we can pull a constant from that. So Laplace of f of t, opposite of t over s minus 8, e to the opposite of s minus 8 times t from 0 to infinity. Uh, so minus a negative, we'll flip that over to a plus, so plus 1 over s minus 8, and integrate this, uh, I would have then a negative 1 over s minus 8 e to the opposite of s minus 8 times t also evaluated from 0 to infinity. So this plus times a minus will flip it minus again. Uh, and let's see, yeah, we'll squeeze one more line on this one before we flip. So opposite of t over s minus 8, e to the opposite of s minus 8 times t from 0 to infinity, minus 1 over s minus 8 squared, e to the opposite of s minus 8 times t, also from 0 to infinity. All right, so let me kind of pause it there for a moment while you catch up with writing if you need to. Of course, you have the pause button. OK, uh, so we mentioned before that uh, we do need these things to converge. Um, and one of our quote-unquote endpoints, so to speak, was infinity. Uh, if we look at the limit as, uh, we'll just use 
placeholder variable n. n goes to infinity of e to the n. Uh, that would diverge if n is a positive. But if we're looking at the same thing, n goes to infinity e to the n, and we know that n is a negative value, that's basically e to the a negative. So instead of growing this way, left to right, we're dropping. Let me drop the right way though. We are dropping, we're approaching a zero line. Uh, This is why we wanted e to a negative value. Uh, so for this one, our exponent on the e, uh, we had, recall, e to the opposite of s minus 8 times t. We want the coefficient of t to be negative. So we also equivalently then want s minus 8 to be positive. So s is greater than 8 for this one. So we do have a little bit of a restriction on what we want s to be here. So then plugging in our endpoints, let me just copy just a little bit of it over so we can see uh, this is what was on the bottom of the last. It is an ugly eight there. S minus eight t from zero to infinity minus one over s minus eight quantity squared e to the opposite of s minus eight to the t also from zero to infinity. Okay, so as t goes to infinity, since this is negative, we can think of it as being in the denominator. We have a minus t over an e to the s minus 8 t, infinity over infinity form. But if we use L'Hopital's rule, the top turns into a constant, the bottom is still a variable bottom's going to blow up, this will go to zero. Let me go ahead and kind of write what I did off to the side there. So we had infinity over infinity form minus infinity over infinity form. So we use L'Hopital. Limit as t goes to infinity of negative 1. The s minus 8s will then uh, drop. And we have sort of a negative 1 there, e to the opposite of s minus 8 t. So this is in the denominator. Approaching infinity, negative 1 over infinity is 0. Minus, then we plug in a 0. Well, the t here would drop that term also to 0. So then anything that's left is going to come from this piece of the puzzle. Uh, so uh, S is a constant, so I'll hang on to this. Negative 1 over S minus 8 quantity squared. And plug in the infinity here. Uh, so E to the negative infinity approaches 0. Then we have minus... 1 over e to the 0. 
So S minus 8 times 0 is still 0. Uh, so minus 1 here. So remember, e to the 0 is a 1. So negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So our Laplace for this function would turn into a 1 over s minus 8 quantity squared. So it's our Laplace transform for t e to the 8 t. Okay, so those were by using the definition. Uh, we also have some tables that we use as well. Um, we're going to derive uh, two of them here, and uh, for the rest of them, we're just going to put them to work. So one that we're going to derive is the Laplace transform of 1. In fact, I would recommend that you just uh, use the definition on this, pause it, see if you can come up with it, and follow along. Okay, welcome back. So this is integral from 0 to infinity of e to the opposite of st times 1 times dt. Well, 1 times anything is that anything, so 0 to infinity e to the minus st dt. So taking this integral, we have uh, negative 1 over s e to the negative st from 0 to infinity. So here we're just going to assume that s is a positive. Since we want e to be equal to, or we want e to be raised to a negative number times t, so s is greater than 0. So this is negative 1 over s times 1 over e to the st from 0 to infinity. So negative 1 over s times plugging in an infinity, we get a 0. Plugging in a 0, we get 1 over e to the 0. So negative 1 times negative 1, positive 1, we get a 1 over s. And that's one of the ones that we'll see. Uh, you can uh, see in your textbook. This is uh, in our table. This is where it came from. So uh, the derivation on that one isn't too bad. Uh, the other one that has uh, a derivation that's uh, not super terrible is e to the a times t. And again, in this one, I would recommend you pause it, try to come up with it on your own, and then see if your work agrees with my work when you're done. Okay, welcome back. So this is integral from 0 to infinity, e to the minus st, e to the at dt. So our Laplace of e to the at. Integral from 0 to infinity, e to the minus s plus a times t dt. And we can go ahead and factor that negative out there. So our Laplace of e to the a times t. We're ready to integrate, so we have negative 1 over s minus a e to the opposite of s minus a times t from 0 to infinity. So I'll hang on to this 1 over s minus a. And inside 1 over e to the s minus a times t from 0 to infinity. So negative 1 over s minus a times plugging in the infinity, we get a 0. Plugging in the 1, we get, or the 0, we get something worth 1. 1 over e to the 0. It's just a 1. So a plus of e to the a times t. 
is 1 over s minus 8. So that's another one that's in the table, but this is why it's in the table. Uh, so then uh, some other ones that uh, I've, uh, the rest of them I wouldn't ask you to derive. Uh, Laplace of t to the n, n factorial over s to the n plus 1 power. Uh, and is in the set of natural numbers, so 0, 1, 2, or uh, I think they may have even limited to 1. I, I, yeah, I believe they did limit it to 1. They didn't necessarily have to. If they uh, let it equal 0, it actually follows the 1 over s pattern uh, that we have in Laplace of 1. Uh, so technically they could have even expanded that to w. Whole numbers. Let's see, well, then we have sines, cosines, and hyperbolic sines and cosines. And again, uh, those I'm not going to ask you to derive, uh, just be able to put them to work. Uh, so the Laplace of sine of kt is k over s squared plus k squared. Plus of cosine of kt is s over the same denominator and then we have our hyperbolics as well. And those basically have a minus where uh, the regular sine and cos and a plus. And again, I'm not going to ask you to derive those, just um, uh, these ones, just be able to put them to work. The first two, uh, you may end up uh, deriving them. Alright, uh, so let's look at uh, just a couple quick examples there. So if f of t is 3x minus 2 quantity cubed, uh, we do need to expand that before we start applying the properties. Uh, so f of t, uh, so 3 choose 0 is 1, 3x cubed. To the zero. Well, negative two to the zero if you want to do it that way. Uh, 